Lots who can't hear me. Um, I'm Jane Press, I'm the Executive Director of Eastern Christian Children's Retreat. We'll be celebrating our 44th year in Wyckoff um, next month. Kimberly Salas is our Development Director, and she's been with us for quite a number of years. 13, 13, 13 years. 14 years. And I've been there more than half my life, I say. I was just going to say a quarters of my life. <laughs> anyway, we serve individuals with intellectual <laughs> and developmental disabilities in our uh, main campus in Wyckoff, as well as now in eight group homes in the community. <coughs> we are, as Gordon said, we are licensed by the state of New Jersey, receive most of our funding through the state, but we do count on, on the support of our community as well as um, uh, individual donors to help make up that gap, which as I'm sure you know is, is, is quite large most years, uh, the gap in funding. There, is a, there has been a change in philosophy in the state and in the country for actually past many years about moving people from a facility-based setting or institutional setting as the state considers our main campus in Wyckoff more out into the community. So we started, um, well we've actually had group homes since 1987. Midland Park was our first group home, um, which is now, we moved that house to Hawthorne, but we've been doing, you know, we've been building and opening group homes for quite a long time. But our mandate now is to move our individuals from our main facility in Wyckoff out into the community. So these are people who have, at the, the current, current time, need 24-hour nursing care and have great physical and medical needs. So it's quite a challenge. It's been quite a challenge for us to, to, meet, that, um, to meet that mandate, but I think that we've embraced it and have moved forward with that, with a capital campaign that was very successful. We embarked on that almost about two years ago, October 2014. And what's our, what's our total that we, we, our goal was a million dollars. And, and right we, now we're at um, 1.2 million, a little over that. Yeah, and that's in pledges over five years for most of our donors. So we were very, very uh, blessed and uh, surprised at the response that we received from our, our community. And um, we have built three homes and opened three homes in the past year and a half, which I think is pretty good. The small um, brochure has a picture of what the homes look like. So all three homes that we've, we've built so far look the same as this home on the, on right. the brochure. And you may, have seen, um, you may have seen them. There's one right on Mountain Avenue in Wyckoff, right going. It's the last house actually in Wyckoff going towards North Halden. Uh, you may have seen that one. That was the first one that we opened in May of last year, 2015. We opened up in one in Waldwick just about a year ago, um, which also looks very similar to that, right across from the high school. And we opened one in Allendale just late June this year, um, which is right next to the church, uh, the uh, Calvary Lutheran Church on Crescent Ave. We opened that one uh, just a couple months ago. So, and we have property in, excuse me? You opened one in Allendale? In Allendale. Excuse me? Oh, no. Well, we moved our we moved our individuals from there. So Allendale's been very supportive um, as far as affordable housing um, trust fund. They've been very Allendale is very proactive as far as their affordable housing um, um, obligations as well, and uh, the other towns as well. Wyckoff and Waldwick have been also terrific to work with. Yeah, the, the towns, um, the municipalities, the ambulance, fire, the community really has embraced us, embraced us coming into the communities. It's been quite wonderful. Yeah, we've been very, we've been really fortunate to be, to close enough to our main campus also, which helps us in maintenance and supervision of staff, et cetera, are only like five miles is about the furthest home. Um, we also have property um, in Hawthorne on Rockledge Road in Hawthorne, and we'll be starting that construction hopefully before the winter. We're just waiting on the permits from the town, and you know, as that goes, you know, when we, we have new construction because we looked at probably 50 homes in the in local towns to see if we could renovate. Um, because the physical needs are so great of our individuals that it was really hard to find a house that we could renovate easily or the property was flat enough and there was just so many factors um, that we decided that it was probably better to build. So that's what, uh, that's what we've been doing. So we, can't, we now have a prototype. We know really what size property we need and, and our architects are great. They can look at a site plan. They can look at the topography and figure out, you know, you got, you got too much elevation there. You're gonna end up with ramps that are, you know, 
100 feet long and all of that kind of stuff. When you're moving people in wheelchairs with great physical needs every day, you really have to take that into consideration, especially for the staff that are doing this work every day. You really have to, you have to think about all that, as well as safety. Like Kim said, our, our, our ambulance and fire have been great. We've invited them to the homes. They've come you know, with, the, with their volunteers so they can actually see the individuals that they might have to respond to in an emergency. We put um, one, of the, one of the features in the homes um, is egress doors we have from the bedrooms so that if there's a fire or you know, during a fire drill even, they can evacuate right out of the bedrooms, which uh, makes a big difference. If any of you have ever been on a volunteer fire or ambulance squad, you know how hard it might be it is to get people out of a house that can't move themselves. So our staff have to do those drills every month, so it's really made a big difference. So a lot of that stuff really costs, the, the costs add up. And, and they're quite expensive. And as you know, just buying property around here is really um, a, a real expense for us as well. So we have about 10 more houses that we have to build. And we have a pretty tight time frame, is, you know, according to the state. Um, they want us to do this in um, you know, a few years. So <laughs> we really have a challenge to try to find the money to do this, as well as why well, find the property, and to do it safely for the people that we serve. Um, and that's, that's my of course, my priority is, and, and I've told the state that we're not going to do anything that's going to compromise their safety or well-being. That that's something we have to keep in mind always. And it is quite a process to figure out which of our residents are going to move into the various homes, making sure that it's the right mix of people. Um, moving just from one town to another town, if you're moving from Wyckoff to Allendale, that could affect the transportation to the day program you go to. You might not be able to go to that program. So there's an interdisciplinary team at the retreat that really takes all of these things into consideration, working together with staff and families to find just the right mix of people to make sure that they don't have too much change. They're, we're changing their home. We want to make sure that their day programs remain the same, that they have some of the same staffing, uh, which is a huge component to making this transition work. And the, the first three homes are working quite nicely. It's been a wonderful transition. The residents are just thriving in the new homes. Um, they've gone from, you know, if they're in our main facility, there's four people in a bedroom, now they have their own bedroom. If they're, you know, so they've, it's really been just such a wonderful change. The families are so happy um, with the new setting that they're in and that they're coming and visiting and, and having quality family time together. So as far as the perspective from our residents and families, it couldn't be better. So, and that's ultimately what our, our concern is, the safety, sure. the happiness, and that everything, you know, and that they're doing well. How many residents were home? Yes. Um, five, and Waldwick is six. How many residents are home? Well, we serve, between all of our, our facilities, we now have about 115 individuals, but we have to move, altogether, we had to move over 60 people from is, our main what campus. What is that ratio like? Are you, what are, Staffing? What's, what's, what's the state staff. demanding of you? I mean, uh, you say 60. I mean, was there a certain ratio that you have to hit? Or? No, we have to move everyone. Got we to have move. to move everyone from our main facility. So our facility is going to stay where it is. We're going to use it for a day program, administrative offices, um, therapies, etc. But we had to move over 60 people. Uh,